How are you doing everybody, Jonathan here, and in this video, I'm going to go over a topic that I know a lot of trainers need help with, and that is how to build an effective website. Now, before I go over that topic, I'm going to encourage everybody to click over there, as if you are not subscribed to my newsletter, it's a great way to stay on top of new information and catch up on old information. It's only sent out on Mondays to keep you abreast of how you can best further your business. Now, when it comes to helping people develop a good website, I review a lot of personal trainers and boot camps websites through my Facebook page. And on that side note, if you're not a fan of my Facebook page, go back up there. There'll be another image you can click on to go over to my Facebook page. Definitely like that as there tends to be more interaction on my Facebook page through the messenger and such so that you can ask me specific questions about your business. But when I review these websites, I often cringe because I see that the trainer is often missing the point uh, and the purpose of the website. And while they have all the best intentions for the website, it's not going to yield the result that they want. Now, you have to understand with everything that you do and every effort that you make, especially in the area of web presence, your goal is to get as many people as possible in front of you so that you can sell them your service, sell them your package, and in turn, make more money. It's not necessarily that you're trying to get more viewership, it's that out of all the views that you get, you can turn the highest percentage of those views over to face-to-face -to -face interaction so that they can get more of you, and you can charm them, or you can um, you know, explain to them why fitness is so important, and then in the end, sign them up. So that should be the main goal for you as a trainer. The only issue is, and understandably so, trainers get so wrapped up in the creative process and you're very proud, and you should be, of all the work that you've put into the business and you know everything that you've done to be a fitness professional and somebody that can help others, that you tend to cloud up your website with information that actually deters the client from signing up with you uh, as opposed to encouraging it. So I'm gonna offer you the four Ps of building a website. Purpose, problems, particular, and price to help you understand exactly what you need to do to make sure that you have an effective website. Now the first thing that you need to do to have an effective website is understand the mindset of a client that goes to your website. All right? Your client does not want to do a lot of research. Their main goal is to understand is this easily accessible, is this reasonably priced, and is this effective. That's the only thing that you want to communicate. All right? um, you have to imagine yourself if you were very hungry, let's say on a Friday night, all right, and you want to go to a restaurant. The last thing that you want to do is wait for 30 minutes to be seated and then have to sit through all of the you know, specials and then wait for drinks and then wait for your food to be made. You know, When you're really hungry, you can essentially just put anything on a plate. You just want to know that it's going to be safe, made cleanly, reasonably priced, and then you can dig in. So when somebody goes to your website or when somebody decides that they want to get a personal trainer or enlist in a boot camp, it's usually following an emotional spike whether it's they all of a sudden feel fat or whether they have to you know, be at an event that's gonna you know, require them to be in a dress or a suit or a reunion or you know, they just feel unattractive to their spouse. There are lots of reasons why people decide that they want fitness, but it's never usually a practical decision. It's usually an emotional spike. It's that same kind of urgency that you have when you wanna eat something and you're at a restaurant and the last thing you wanna do is wait. So your main goal is to put enough information so the client understands, okay, this is what I need to do, this is gonna get me to my goal, and I can now you know, contact this trainer or give them my information that they can contact me. And that leads us to the first P, which is purpose of a fitness website. The purpose of your website is to get people in front of your face, and that can only happen through an exchange of information. You wanna give them enough information so that they either contact you or they leave their information so you can contact the end client. The truth is, you're not gonna get the same kind of viewership as Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. So YouTube and Instagram is some place where you wanna put a lot of content because people are going to come back to YouTube and Facebook often, all right? But when it comes to your website, they're probably gonna come there once or twice. So twice if you're lucky. So you wanna make sure that the first time they go to the website, you knock it out of the park and you get the information that you need to stay in contact with your client. Now the second P is going to be problems. And these are actually barriers. Things that you think are good for your fitness website, but actually deter clients from you know, taking that step to giving you information, all right? The first deterrent or the first problem is going to be making an overly flashy website with tons of bells and whistles, like a flash intro or a bunch of sliders. This typically slows down the loading time 
of your website and just like when you call up a restaurant and you know that there's going to be a 30 minute wait if there's a 45 second load time for your website a desperate client is not going to sit around to you know to sit through your your awesome you know intro they're going to move on to the next one so you want to stay away from things that are going to complicate the load time of your website which would be like a large background picture or too many pictures I only use three or four pictures on my website total because it slows down the load time of the website. You want to get people in and out, all right, so that you can go on to the next step. Another problem is going to be your background music. Now, people tend to be very judgmental. So if you have one type of music, and it could be one genre of many that you like, but it is it just happens to be that one genre that your prospective client doesn't like, they may say, oh, this environment is not for me. So it's also an irritant. When you're trying to read and you have the music blaring through your speakers, you don't want to go through that. So you want to keep the background music, which also slows down load time, out. Another problem is going to be getting too fancy with your fonts. You want something that's going to be very easily readable, like Area or Helvetica. All right, You don't need to use impact in your text. You don't need to use something like brush script. Although it's pretty to look at, it tends to make it harder to read. And you want your clients to read the vital information quickly and then say, all right, I want to sign up. The last problem is going to be unnecessary information. All right, You want to have a you-based website. Oftentimes when I have people look at my website, bootcampbff.com, they notice that I don't have a bio. And the main reason I don't have a bio is I came to realize that clients don't care about that, all right? The client is focused on themselves. They're not focused on you. So when I speak to you in my videos, I don't say, well, I do this, I do that, I do this. I speak about what can you do? How can I help you? And that's the same kind of voice that you want to have for your website. This is how we can help you lose weight. This is how you're going to feel comfortable. This is how we're going to help your meal plan. They don't care that you've been a trainer since you, know, you were 15. They don't care about your certifications, much less do they understand what the certifications mean. So when it comes to an about page, it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about the client. So make it succinct and then just communicate to them more reasons why you're going to be an effective service for them. Now the third P is going to be particulars and these are terms that you're going to have to understand anytime you build any kind of website. Uh, the first term that we're going to go over is going to be web hosting and the web hosting service is what takes your content from your machine to the World Wide Web. So regardless, you're always going to have to have a web hosting service. There are a ton out there. There are Wix, there's Network Solutions, there's InMotion Hosting, there's GoDaddy, probably the most popular one. Um, but my personal recommendation is going to be iPage. iPage is the one that I use and the main reason why I recommend it is that they do daily backups. The last thing you want to do is lose information. A lot of you know that earlier in the year there was a server crash and I almost lost three months worth of information. And It's a pain to constantly have to manually update your site. So since iPage does that automatically, I would definitely recommend that you uh, use them as they've been very good for me. If you want to get access to their site, you can go to jonathanfitpro.com backslash website and it will take you directly over to the hosting page. Now when it comes to the cost of hosting, uh, it's going to end up costing you about $100 a year. That's a fixed cost that you're going to pay any time that you do web hosting. And it really just boils down to the services that you're offered. The number of websites you're going to have with a hosting package, the amount of memory, and the amount of emails you're allowed. And to be quite honest with you, you can usually opt for the lowest amount um, because for one website, for a local marketing, you don't need a whole lot of memory. All right, so I don't want you to spend money unnecessarily. It's probably going to spend you about $100 a year in order to keep your website on the World Wide Web. That's a fixed cost. The next thing is going to be your domain name. The domain name is whatever follows www. And, you know, my domain name is www.jonathanfitpro.com. Dot com with Jonathan Fipro being the domain name. I had to purchase that and I had to pay a certain amount of money to keep that going. I end up paying about twelve to fifteen dollars a year to keep my domain name registered under my name, otherwise it will be essentially released and then somebody else can buy it. Um, now if a website name that you want is already taken, don't go through the hassle of trying to bid uh, for a website because usually good names are going to cost you thousands of dollars. Like I originally wanted BFF.com for my boot camp. That was taken. BFF boot camp somehow was taken. So I opted for BootCampBFF.com and that's worked just fine. All right, the main thing that you want to understand is that number one, you want to keep your name as short as possible. Number two, if at all possible, you want to eliminate any kind of special characters such as dashes. Uh, or periods or numbers in your domain name as it makes it hardest to remember. And last but not least, you want to stick with the .com. So let's say uh, BFF.net was available for me. 
I'd rather have a .com as people are more used to using .coms than .nets. So uh, stick with a .com and then come up with the most practical name possible. Um, and then again, the domain name is usually bundled in with your web hosting company. So if you go to iPage, it's like you buy your web hosting and then you get the domain at the same time. So they don't make it all that complicated. Um, the last aspect of building a website in terms, of, in terms of the particulars is going to be your platform. There are a lot of different platforms that you can use to build the content of your website. You can go from scratch with an application like Dreamweaver, but you have to know coding and coding takes a lot of work. Um, there's Wix.com where they have a lot of templates uh, that are available for you, but they tend to be fixed and a little bit limited. You have to do a lot of deleting and underleading. I would personally recommend that you use WordPress, whereas WordPress is an open source and uh, you got to make sure that it's WordPress.org, not WordPress.com. WordPress.com is specifically for blogs, whereas WordPress.org offers you a lot more options to make your website exactly what you want. Um, so WordPress allows you to either do coding or write your work in the way that you'd want to see it. It's pretty easy to add videos and or pictures to your website and they have a lot of themes so you can choose a, a baseline format for your website without going nuts about trying to figure out what exactly is best. Uh, your best bet is going to be the cleanest website possible. And just to show you the variance in websites, you know, JonathanFitPro.com was built on WordPress. BootCampBFF.com is built on WordPress as well. So you can use WordPress to create a completely different site and um, the plugins that they offer allow you options to add different things onto your website such as forms and maps and things like that. So I would definitely say to stick with WordPress.org. Now, when it comes to, now the fixed cost, you're gonna end up paying like $150 a year to keep your website going, that's done. But when it comes to the maintenance of your website or the building of your website, I think this is where a lot of trainers tend to spend a lot of money unnecessarily. So the fourth P when it comes to your fitness website is going to be the price. So there are a number of routes that you can take in order to build your website. The first thing that you can do is you can barter. Um, if you have a client that builds websites, you can exchange your services in terms of boot camp or personal training in order for them to build your website and then you don't spend any money. That's the pro. Now the con, I've bartered website building before. The main issue that I run into is that, especially with personal training, you're, if you charge $50 an hour, or let's say $60 an hour, you know, depending on the amount of time that the client takes to do the website, I can make certain edits on my website that take me 10 minutes where, you know, a client may say that it's worth an hour's worth of work. That's an issue that I ran into often. And, uh, you know, if you barter and you have, you know, a lot of different edits that you make, I, I make edits all the time, then you're constantly giving away um, essentially time. Time is money for you. So it's, it's a little bit more reasonable if you're doing it as a boot camp, but if you're doing it as personal training, then you're gonna end up, I think, losing out on income you could have earned uh, when you barter, all right? So unless you know exactly what you want, bartering is kind of a so-so situation um, because then it can also strain the relationship if the client doesn't give you exactly what you want um, or if they can't meet your creative needs or if they mess up. Um, so yeah, it's an option, but I would tread carefully on that option. Um, the next option would be Elance.com. Elance.com is a website full of freelancers where you can essentially hire somebody to build your website. Um, pros, you're gonna probably gonna pay less uh, for Elance than you would if you did uh, you know, a local listing or if you hired a professional uh, agency to build your website. They may charge you thousands of dollars, whereas Elance may charge you hundreds of dollars. The only um, drawback with Elance, I've worked with Elance and uh, actually, fitprocalculator.com, a lot of the coding was done um, from somebody from Elance as a, a little bit of the coding was over my head. However, if you hire somebody from the United States, you're probably gonna end up paying close to the same amount of money that you would with an agency. So you'll be paying you know, f at least $500 to thousands of dollars. And um, you can go with a slightly cheaper option where you hire somebody from overseas for instance, you know, the person that built or helped me build Fit Pro Calculator was from India. However, there was a 12 hour difference. So communication became an issue. And also, again, if you don't know exactly what you want with the website and need to make constant edits, you can't do that for free. You have to pay them every single time that you need to make an edit. Moreover, if they do the coding on a platform that you're not used to, like if they do all the coding in regular HTML script uh, as opposed to WordPress, 
you're at their mercy. Like you can't make the change, they have to make it for you. So the Fit Pro Calculator, the effort, which should have cost about, let's say, $2,000 to build that website, ended up costing me somewhere close to like $5,000, if not more. Um, I'm glad I got it done, but at the same time, you know, for a complicated website, uh, I needed um, Elance. However, for my bootcamp or my personal training website, I wouldn't go that route. Um, the third option that you can take is a college student. All right, you can very easily go to any kind of student center, uh, post up a flyer saying, I will pay you $100 to build my website. And if you find somebody in the computer science department, you know, they may be able to build your website and $100 to them is like, you know, for a starving college student is huge. The only issue is when it comes to hiring college students. Now that's the one avenue that I haven't taken. So a lot of this is conjecture, but when you hire a college student, their priorities may not be the same as yours. So you may find that there's a little bit of a time delay. All right, uh, or a lack of serious, seriousness in the um, importance of your website. So yes, it's an option um, if you don't have any other options. But at the same time, you know, you're working with somebody that may not have the level of responsibility that you need in order to get your website when you need it. Now, I never present a problem without presenting a solution. I always say your fourth option, your best option, would be to do it yourself, all right? And if the main reason why you're intimidated to do it yourself is you don't understand the coding, I would definitely recommend that you check out my Dumbbells to Dollars course. I actually recently added an entire section on how to build your website from start to finish. I built a bootcamp website, took you through the steps, um, in terms of the video, there's about an hour and a half worth of video and you can get your website running in three hours, all right, essentially, from, suits to, from soup to nuts, from buying the hosting to getting your last click, you'll get all the content that you need. And I'll also show you how to add videos, how to add different pictures, how to edit your pictures, how to do some coding to change some effects, the plugins that you need. And it's gonna be based off of my website. It's gonna be the same kind of platform as bootcampbff.com. So if you go to bootcampbff.com and you say, hey, I would like a website like this, it's worked for me, I haven't had many changes, and as you can see, it doesn't have to be an overly complicated website, it doesn't have to be a very busy website, you don't need a lot of bells and whistles. I would definitely recommend that you go over to that button up there, and then find the Dumbbells to Dollars image, click on that course, and you can actually check out some pre previews. Um, go, to the, uh, go to the link, anything after lecture 107, you'll see the building your website portion, and there you'll get an idea for how I walk you through. And it's actually very simple, three hours and you should be done from soup to nuts. So um, if you're willing to take the uh, test to do it yourself, you spend much less doing it yourself with a guided video than you would you know, hiring somebody else to do it. But that's up to you. I've presented you with a lot of information. Um, the main thing that you wanna understand is the framework of your website is to get people from their space into your space. And I know you can do it. So. Hope you found this video helpful. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. If you're not a fan of my Facebook page, become a fan of my Facebook page. Stay tuned. I'll have videos every week for you guys to keep you abreast of what you can do to better build your business. And make sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any information. So that's about it. I'll see you guys soon. And as always, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels all get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.